Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we are testing software update 2021.4.12. Now in the previous version I tested the lateral g-forces and now with this version I did notice some improvements on the lateral g-forces and the cornering but I haven't thoroughly tested it yet. So let's find out today how much of an improvement this actually is. So here we have the two S-curves, now let's see how it will react when I start measuring right now. So here on the second one I got a notification, let's see how it reacts now. It does not give me a notification and it stayed just within the lane, so that's good. And now here on that first left-hander I got an actual beep warning the previous time let's see what it does now yeah it's handling it nicely a little bit too much to the outside touching touching the curves or touching the lines but uh, yeah it's doing really well here awesome and of course we need to do it the other way around as well So in the first one it was hitting the grass and I'm going to start measuring now. So here it was hitting the grass a little bit. Yeah, that's staying within the lines. It was beeping here I believe. Yeah, that's going a lot smoother. Now the second one is a little bit more tight. So let's see how it actually reacts on this update. Here we go. Oh, it is beeping, slowing down a little bit and staying nice within the lane markings on the right hander. So yeah, that I think qualifies as a big improvement and a lot safer driving on autopilot in this specific circumstance. Now, since we've had some improvements on the cornering in the other test cases. Let's see if the S-curve, the infamous S-curve, has gotten some improvements as well. Let's find out. Will it slow down? It is not slowing down up front. It is going over the line, slowing down really hard. Again on the line here. This one seems to be a little bit better. Now let's see what this right-hander does. It stays barely within the lane, so no real improvement on this particular S-curve. Now I didn't put the graphs underneath the video like I did the previous time, because when looking at the graphs I noticed something peculiar, and that is that there are a lot more spikes and a lot higher spikes. So what I did is I applied a trend line to it and with that trend line we get a little bit more uh, elimination of those high values uh, which can be caused by some bumps in the road for example and when we look at that trend line then we see that in the first uh, left turn uh, we stay well below the 0 0.3 and then in the right turn that follows there was no warning whatsoever um, we did get around the minus 0 0.3. Now it is um, here in the chart it is in G's and uh, since 1G is uh, 9.8 meters uh, per second squared right it's a little bit above 0 0.3 that we are looking for in the number of the chart where the limit should be. Now if we go to the next uh, turn then actually we see a small spike around 0 0.4 and in the negative side it is just above the 0 0.3 so that little spike apparently is not enough that is what I first 
thought when I looked at this graph. It's a small spike, it immediately dropped uh, below the 0 0.3. But on the other hand, we had some spikes in the previous uh, run that immediately caused that specific uh, response of the car, saying that, hey, the autopilot or the auto steer is limited in this case. Now that was the first little red flag that says something is wrong here and I'm not sure what it is. Now the second run, that is where things really get weird. So that is in the opposite side or the opposite direction. Um, where first it, the car used to hit the grass but now it stayed within that line. And if you look at that graph then you see that even with the trend line we go up until 0 0.4 G's and we do that three times in a row we exceed that 0 0.3 and it didn't give me a warning right going down or going to the right uh, after that turn we stay below the 0 0.3 so that is uh, no problem whatsoever and then we get the warning and the warning was issued as soon as I went above the 0 0.4 so um, that's that's quite a peak that we have above that and then we go down the car slowed down immediately the lateral g-forces dropped drastically and then on the right turn that was taken a lot slower then of course we get like a, a um, 0 0.1 g uh, lateral g-force so that's um, yeah, that was to be expected that that last one was not going to have a lot of effect anymore. Now you see why I found this strange is that we have several occasions where we exceed or are at the uh, 0 0.3 G's. Um, and the car didn't quite respond to it. It didn't give me the warning. Now the warning only came when I exceeded the 0 0.4 G's. Now I do know that Avere also uh, reapplied or requested to revisit the um, increased lateral G-force at the UNECE meeting in February. The result from that meeting in February was that um, some were okay with it, others were not okay, like the Netherlands, they're always for some reason playing hardball and they don't accept a lot of things that are being proposed. They're always uh, being the difficult party. Now sometimes Norway also includes that which is kind of weird because of the whole Elon uh, statement that Norway would get FSD first in Europe. That still don't see how that will happen but maybe he knows something that we don't. Anyways. Um, so yeah, it could be that in the March session, where we don't have report for that yet, it could be that it was accepted at that point. Because in February, it was just like, okay, we're going to look at it, but there were no decisions taken. In March, there was another meeting. Maybe it was accepted then. We don't have report yet. Um, and that could mean that because it was early March, and I got this release about mid-March. So it could be that it is really quickly implemented by Tesla. Now, unfortunately, that still does not explain why the infamous S-curve cannot be taken properly by my car at this point. Um, it should also not exceed the 0 0.4 uh, meters per second squared there, but somehow there it does not uh, adjust the speed, it does not uh, conform to the regulations yet um, so maybe that will come but it seems to be a little a painful point for tesla to get that specific s-curve fixed because right now we are seeing a, a big improvement in those two s-curves that i've tested in this video but the one that i've been testing from the start that does not seem to get fixed um, and yeah i don't know why that seems to be a lasting problem for tesla and uh, yeah, uh, we'll see in the next update whether that has disappeared or whether that is something that will remain. And as always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and make sure you click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. And for now, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye bye.